during the uh, feast day of the guardian angels, which I believe is October 2nd, uh, this passage of scripture is also read. And it talks about the angels looking at the Lord and then looking at us. So our guardian angels who are here with us are very unique. In fact, they're so unique, they are probably the most unemployed angels in the universe. Because a lot of us don't have a personal relationship with our guardian angel, like a daily one. Uh, we, can always, we probably have a lot of stories about how our guardian angel saved our life or protected us or protected somebody we know. We have all those type of stories. But how do you communicate with your guardian angel? And what's interesting about guardian angels is they know God's will for us. And they sometimes give us subconscious or quiet nudges to go a certain direction. And a lot of times we don't go that direction. And that's why we go to confession. <laughs> but one of the things uh, I did about 30-ish years ago is I decided to consecrate myself to my guardian angel. Long, long time ago. And one of the things they taught me in that consecration was not only to develop a personal relationship with my guardian angel, but to be aware of that once you start talking to your guardian angel and want a relationship with him, that the crosses would increase. And guess what? They were right. <laughs> but they always know God's will for us. Not only can they protect me, you know, I know that I don't know when I'm going to die. My guardian angel does know. So I don't know when that is. So I live my life as if today is my last day. But one of the things I do is I always pray for God's will in my life. And here's the hard part. I actually trust in God. I trust that my guardian angel will direct me to do, say, or be at the right place at the right time. I actually trust him. And so there's this whole thing about, this whole movement about, should we uh, name our guardian angel? My name is Father Darren. Don't you dare call me anything else. Don't call me Father Fred. So we can't just go to our guardian angel and say, hey, I'm calling you Johnny from now on. Well, his name is Guardian Angel, and they go by Guardian Angel. But what's unique about a guardian angel is they do have a mission, and their name is your mission. So my, I have no idea what my mission is. I guess being a priest is one of them. But more importantly, I notice that the more I rely on the passions and the desires that God has given me, and my guardian angel directs that for me, I see how God uses my gifts and talents for his greater glory. And when we start doing that, we can see how our guardian angel works in conjunction with God to help us do his ministry in the church. So your guardian angel's name is Guardian Angel. I wouldn't call you by a different name, would I? I'd call you by your first name. When I taught high school, I would ask my students, what's your name? Mike. Is it Mike or Michael? It's Mike. So I'm going to call you Mike. But some guys would say Michael. So I would always call them by their name. But since I don't know my guardian angel's name, I just call him guardian angel. It's very important for us to understand that because once you start getting that relationship with your, your guardian angel really close and you talk to them like I'm talking to you, they really respond to that. In fact, sometimes I even say guardian angel, protect me because I drive like an Italian. I'm still here today because of it. <laughs> But more importantly, I say, hey, show me God's will. He's in heaven. He talks to the Father. And he can talk to us. That's a fact. And so today, when you go home, talk to your guardian angel. Say the guardian angel prayer, but talk to him like I'm talking to you. And ask him to direct your day, and then your week, and then your month then your year, and then your life. And they will, they will respond to you freely choosing to listen to them. Amen.